So for the past year, I've looked at multiple digital SATs, categorized hundreds of questions down by the concept, style, and difficulty, and just analyzed the heck out of them. And to quickly summarize what is different on the digital SAT, of the 25 concepts that were tested on the paper SAT, they took out complex numbers and small things here and there. But for the digital SAT, they have added small things here and there for most of the 25 concepts. So for example, when it comes to function, they have added translation. And when it comes to triangles, they also added congruency. And these two topics were very rare on the paper SAT, but they are now consistently showing off on the digital SAT. So you want to be familiar with those two concepts, plus everything else that's kind of added in. And by the way, guys, that's going to be the updated 25 concept list for the digital SAT, which I'm going to link in the pinned comment down below. And on top of this, they also have changed the wording of the questions and how they are meant to be solved. But one of the biggest changes is going to be the addition of Desmos. And based on the past digital SATs, seems like Desmos is really meant to be used on very few specific set of questions. Questions. Which means if you're using Desmos to solve any other questions, that means you're essentially taking the long route and shooting yourself in the foot. But for select few questions, you can literally use Desmos and get the answer in a matter of seconds. And that's exactly what we're going to go over today. And while I'm making all of these updates to the Accelerator 3.0 so that my students can have the best and the most up-to-date materials to study for the upcoming digital SAT, I want to share with you guys the three types of questions that must be solved with Desmos to get to the answer as quickly as possible and how you can recognize these questions so that you can get a higher score on your next SAT. So this is gonna be the first type. And as always guys, everything we're gonna go over in this video is going to be nicely organized into a PDF, which I'm gonna link in the pinned comment in the description box down below. I highly recommend you guys to print them out and try with me because that's how you get better on the SAT, doing it for yourself instead of watching a complete stranger solve it on YouTube. So let's take a look. What is the smallest solution to the equation shown above? So on the SAT, solution is referring to the value of X that makes the equation true. And for the equation above, we're looking for value of x that makes our y value equal to zero. And when it comes to a parabola or any kind of graph, we know that the y is equal to zero at the x-intercepts, also known as the roots for a parabola. And typically, in order for you to find out where the roots are located, you would usually just factor out this equation. But the problem is that our equation looks very, very, very complicated. When it's complicated, you don't want to do it because it's going to take a very very, very long time. If it was something simple as 6x plus 5 like that, then you can simply factor it out like so. But the moment you have a number attached to the x squared or it looks complicated like that, then you don't want to factor it anymore. Instead, we just want to use Desmos because if you think about it, we're simply looking for the x value of our x intercepts, which means if we can visually see what the graph looks like, then we can pinpoint exactly where the x intercept is located and find out what the x value is. So now let's pop this equation into the decimals calculator. So our equation is going to be 3x squared plus 47x plus 104. And if we just zoom out right over here, we see our x-intercept is located at here and here. And because we're looking for the smallest x-intercept, we're going to use negative 13, which means that's going to be our answer. So the main takeaway here is that when it comes to a parabola, when the equation is simple like this, you can simply factor it out. You should definitely do that. That will be the faster way. But the moment you have a number attached to x squared or your equation just looks complicated overall, then you simply want to plug it into decimals graph it out and find out where the x-intercepts are located. So simple, factor, complicated, graph it on Desmos. Let's go to the next type. So the question says, when the system of equations shown above are graphed on the xy plane, they intersect at point xy, which the following is a possible value of x. So why does it say possible, right? Well, if you graph this out, we know that we're working with a parabola and a line. And sometimes they can have two intersection points. And of the two, we are looking for one of them. When you're finding the intersection on the paper SAT, all you had to do was set the equations equal to y, and set the resulting portions equal to each other and find out what the x value is. And by the way, for the digital SAT, you should still know how to do this because some questions cannot be solved with Desmos. But for this question, you don't have to do it this way. Instead, we're gonna use Desmos. Instead of doing all the math, we're simply going to plug these two equations into Desmos, graph them out visually and find out where the intersections are located and find out what the x values are going to be. So if we plug it in, we're gonna get 4x squared is equal to y plus 213 and 8x x plus 4y is equal to negative 12. And by the way, guys, you don't have to rearrange the equation for Desmos. Just pop it in ugly. It's going to be fine. And for us to find the point of intersection, we're just going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to click one of the graphs. And this gray point right here is going to show us where the intersections are located. It's at minus 7.5 and 7. 
which means our answer is going to be choice C because that's the only answer. So the main takeaway here is whenever you're looking for the intersection with complicated looking equations, simply pop it into Desmos and visualize what the graph actually looks like find out the intersection points and get your answer that way. But more importantly, you should know the old school methods of finding the intersection because they're having questions where the equations cannot be plugged into Desmos and you have to do it the old school route. So if you're aiming for anything above 400, know both routes. The OG routes, I'm gonna link it in the pinned comment down below where you can learn how to find intersections by hand. And last but not least, let's go to the third question, which looks something like this. Which of the following point x, y is a solution to the system of inequalities shown above? So what most students end up doing and what exactly SAT wants you to do is look at these answer choices, try to plug them all into both of these inequalities and see which one works for both of them. And the good news is that that method definitely works, but the bad news is that it takes forever. And because the College Board knows you are going to plug them in manually in order, they tend to put the correct answer choices towards the end. But at the same time, that's not always the case and you don't wanna gamble with your SAT score and gamble with your future. So any idea what the faster route would be? Yes, we're gonna pop it into Desmos because Desmos will save us time. And you kind of see a pattern now, Desmos, the main purpose is to save you guys time. It's a shortcut. So 2y is less than or equal to x plus three and y is going to be greater than or equal to minus three x plus two. And from here, we are looking for a solution. And when it comes to multiple inequalities, solution is referring to the overlapping region. So top is green only, bottom is red only, left, nobody likes them, nobody cares. But this right side is both red and green is overlapping, which means whichever coordinate lands on the overlapping region is going to be the solution. And that's going to be our answer. And one minus 10 is way down there. So it's not gonna work. One positive 10 is only on the green. Minus two, two, nobody cares. And two, two is gonna be right there, which means that's going to be our answer. So the main takeaway here is whenever you're looking for a solution to multiple inequalities, instead of plugging them all in, even though that works, it takes forever. Instead, graph it out on Desmos and see which coordinate falls under the overlapping region. Does that make sense? So what you guys need to understand is that Desmos is not going to solve your life. It's not gonna take you to your target score. However, there are very select few questions that are meant to be solved with Desmos because it will take you to the answer in matter of seconds. And there are so many types where you have to use Desmos, but the three that you should be able to recognize now are going to be one, whenever you're looking for a solution to a inequality over here, two, finding the location of the intersection in multiple equations, and three, finding the roots in a parabola when equations look complicated or there is a number attached to x squared, but you should still know how to factor. And everything is going to be linked in the description box down below, and I'll see you guys on the next video.